Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. This is going to be a special video where I sort of celebrate everything I love about the Boom Studios Power Rangers comics. Now, not quite literally everything. That would be a really long video going on the checklist, but sort of the broad strokes, highlighting some main things I like. I wanted to make this video in honor of us hitting issue 100. I intended to make it and have it come out right before issue 100 or right after, but if you didn't know, my main computer kind of crapped out, so everything about like the video schedule has been delayed. But I wanted to make this it's sometime after issue 100 has come out and after I reviewed it, but I wanted to highlight it anyway because the comics are one of my personal favorite things about the franchise recently, especially in the last, I don't know, five, six years, however long they've been going. And I think there's sort of two primary reasons outside of um, stuff within the comic that I'm going to highlight, like storyline and characters, but I think there's two primary meta reasons why I like it so much. And number one, I want to highlight that these came along at such a perfect time. But I also want to clarify that their timing doesn't mean that I wouldn't like the comics regardless. And by that I mean the comics came about in a time when the show uh, was disappointing, to say the least. You know, it really backpedaled. We had seen the franchise evolve. And even though I've come to terms with a lot of the shows and come to enjoy aspects of them, you know, a lot of the Neo Saban era definitely took the progress we made with the series and backpedaled it and tried to do this MMPR 2.0 thing. And a lot of the characters felt like these goody two-shoes mannequins. The dialogue was weird. It was devoid of a lot of substance. And so then here come the comics that actually have in-depth storytelling that take advantage of the universe and actual multi-dimensional characters. And so to get to enjoy that in a time when the show was lacking real characters was amped up how much I enjoyed the comics. Not to mention, it's versions of the MMPR characters who were in that same Saban bubble where they're not really characters. Like, they're kind of caricature, like, they're basically just goody two-shoes character descriptions, if we're being honest. And they're characters that I've beloved for years having grown up with it, but compared to some of the deeper characters we got later, they're very basic. So it was really cool to get to read about versions of these characters that were actually well, characters. Again, I want to stress that, like, I think I would love the comics regardless. Like, even if the show was really good because of how much I like the comics and what they've done, I think I would still love them, but I think the timing really was beneficial to it. And the other main thing I like about it is it's just nice to have a storytelling medium that's actually taking the Power Rangers stories seriously. And by that I mean Power Rangers has this really rich history and universe. It's kind of a crazy mixed up universe, but it has so much potential and it's really cool to see all these creatives actually take it seriously in the sense that they want to build the lore and the stories and the characters and interweave it all and it's not just a minute by minute like, hey, you know, we're doing this season, this season, it doesn't really matter. And it's really cool to see them actually take advantage of this universe, expand it, and actually take advantage of these characters and again, get to see three-dimensional versions of characters that never really had character before. Now just to highlight some of the things I've loved about the journey, you know, just for some story and characters, I want to highlight that even before uh, like the major stuff started to happen like Draken and Shattered Grid. What actually hooked me again was the character stuff. I it took a while to get into the comics because I was like, ugh, more MMPR, but people were like, no, it's really good. And then when I checked it out, even before Draken showed up, I'm like, holy crap, this is really good because it was like dealing with Tommy's guilt over being evil. The team mistrusting him instead of being like, golly gee, Tommy, let's go get a malt and volunteer to charity. Like they were actually behaving like normal human beings. So I was immediately engaged by the character conflict and stuff like that. And so I loved the character work. And that's one of my favorite things about the comic. Sometimes it can get away from itself with the bigger plots, but that's something I liked even before the bigger plot and character additions was the actual three-dimensional interesting characters. And of course you have stuff like Draken. I love the idea of Draken in a world of the coinless. Really cool character, really cool world, opened up a lot of potential. Some people will call this, and a lot of the comics, fanfic -y, which is something I really hate, to be honest. But honestly, this storyline of Draken and the Coinless is a very classic, like, what if Elseworlds type of story. Like, there's a lot of stuff the comics do that come under fire from fans where it's like, have you read another comic? Like, this is very common. Like, if I went on a binge of, like, Flash lore when I got into the Flash series. And if you go read the Reverse Flash's wiki, holy crap, it's knocking futz. Like, they change the origins 15,000 times. Um, they do, like, rebirth events. So it's like, what the Power Rangers comics done is pretty tame. And I love stuff like this. The idea of, like, a what if Tommy stayed evil type of thing. And also the idea of the Green White Ranger hybrid costume is cool. And it's not that different from something like Batman Green Lantern or stuff they've done like that. So that was really cool. And it opened up a lot to the world. 
And then of course there's Shattered Grid. You know, Shattered Grid was an amazing anniversary event. And then it was like this big scale thing, but also didn't feel like it got away from itself too much and had grounded character stuff within it. And it presented all these different perspectives. And I think it really deepened the character of Draken too. And I also liked that it allowed them to change the world. I mean, the comics were already in a different continuity, but it was kind of in this parallel continuity where Everything from the show universe did happen, it was just enhanced, but then Shattered Grid effectively was like their New 52 type of deal after Flashpoint, where now they can really go off book if they want to, because all of reality has changed, and I really liked that about what Shattered Grid did, and I was so excited week after re week to read Shattered Grid. I also want to highlight Gogo -Go because as I mentioned when I first got into the comics, I was like, ugh, it took a while because it's more MMPR, and then they announced the second ongoing was more MMPR from the early days, and I'm like, come on, son. With that being said, after I checked it out, Go Go Power Rangers is very underrated, I think, as an entire run. I mean, the early stuff isn't necessarily necessary, but it has some really good character work, and that was something I really appreciated about the early issues. But then it also did some really cool lore beats. It had some really cool backstory on Rita. That standout issue where she was kind of living that dream life was a really cool standout issue. Alpha One, I think, was a standout character who was very right about Zordon and the Rangers being a half measure. Um, stuff later on during Necessary Evil, like explaining uh, more about the white light power was really cool. Um, even though I think it kind of stole Go Go Power Rangers identity a little bit. It was kind of neat to have it as a backstory for the Omega Rangers, which was kind of neat as well. But I think that's a really underrated book that did a lot of cool stuff even before it sort of synced up with the main comic, like Fear the Walking Dead style. Speaking of the Omegas, that has to be one of my all-time favorite additions in the comic. Like seriously, I love the suits, love the concept, love a lot of the lore surrounding it, but just the idea that we turned the Peace Conference, which was a storyline in the show, very famous for existing because of behind the scenes drama, into something cool that expanded the mythology and allowed the characters of Jason, Zack, and Trinity to be more prominent. And that's another favorite thing about this for me is that I was always an MMPR 2.0 kind of guy. Um, that was the one I remembered more. I was kind of more of a Rocky Adam and Aisha team person. Like, don't get me wrong, I liked the OGs, but I never had as much of an attachment to them. And I strongly prefer, let's be honest here actually, I prefer every single comic version of the character to the TV show version. But Jason, Zack, and Trini, I think especially got so much more depth and interesting aspects. Like Zack, very early on when they had stuff like him being chosen to be the Green Ranger initially, um, Trini got a lot of really cool moments. Like I remember that like uh, Last Jedi, like, did you come here to save my soul moment? And Trini's like, no, so badass. And Jason in particular has been a highlight for the comic for me. I think they really highlighted what an interesting character and a good leader he can be. I know he's made some mistakes, but I think that's what makes him interesting is that he really he weighs heavily on him. And I think that comic really highlights that. And it's funny because when I was younger, I always preferred Tommy to Jason, but in the comics, I by far prefer Jason to Tommy. Not that comic Tommy is bad. He got a little boring after he became the White Ranger, but I just really like what they did for those characters with the Omegas. I also think with the storyline about them hunting down like morphin, like mutant anomalies effectively was a cool setup that I think could have had more to it. But with that, I actually really liked Kia's character as well. I think she was very underrated. Kind of a generic motivation if you compare it to other stories that have done similar things, like the world would be better without the Jedi or the Green Lanterns or whatever. But the idea of a character that thinks the world would be better without Power Rangers is kind of cool. I thought she was actually a really interesting antagonist that I'd like to see come back, but that was an idea that I really liked. Along with that Morphin Anomaly story, I also really like stuff like introducing Dane, Doggy Kruger species bounty hunter. Really cool idea there. I loved that a lot. Just sort of sidestepping for a second, I also liked a lot of the annual story we used to get, like sort of exploring other seasons. Um, we got really cool, interesting backstory for like all of Rita's cronies, especially like Finsters, which was really hauntingly creepy. There was some really cool stuff like that that I really appreciated. Um, I've also really enjoyed the recent Altarian War arc. It wasn't perfect, but it was really interesting to get more history on Altar, see them as antagonists, get more backstory on Zordon. I think that was a really beneficial story for Zordon, who, who can often be a douche. And I like that this tackled that head on. It had some interesting dynamics about Zordon clashing with Jason and Billy. And it actually wound up having Zordon learn a lesson and become a better character. I also personally really liked them fleshing out Zed's backstory. I like Zed's backstory a lot. Just like Rita, uh, who's gotten a lot of backstory. I like that they made those characters, which are basically just, Maha, I'm a villain, and made them actual characters. So one of the recent things, I'm a little mixed on it, but I do like aspects of it, which is the new Green Ranger. I was initially a little bit annoyed they were bringing him back. But I have to admit, it's cool because it's like one of those things where you don't have to worry about Sentai, so you can bring him back. And I think that Aftermath, more recently, he's kind of fallen by the wayside and been a bit of a disappointment. But this is a positive video, and I want to talk about what I like. Love the suit, 
possibly my favorite version of the Green Ranger suit. I liked him when he really, like his first appearance. I think that there were some really cool things around that, drawing the parallels between Rita creating the Green Ranger, um, literally drawing the parallels visually, and Grace creating this Green Ranger. Um, when he first appeared, like all cool and mysterious, it definitely brought early Gold Ranger vibes, because um, my favorite version of the Gold Ranger was before we knew who he was, when he was just cool and mysterious. And then um, the idea of Matt being a publicly out Ranger with his identity out there, uh, I think was interesting. And I think it created this interesting possibility for um, a clash of values between the MMPR traditional Rangers and him, which I don't think was fully explored, but I wanted to highlight that I liked some of the ideas from that. That's the thing about the comic is I'm not like I love everything they've ever done, but even with some of my lesser favorite things, there's been some stuff I really like. Like Beyond the Grid, for example, probably one of the weaker storylines for me, there was something disjointed about it, something weird about the dialogue, but I loved the ideas of it. I love that they took a chance on this weird amalgam team and focused on them. I loved the Solar Rangers. A lot of people don't like their designs. I thought they were cool and unique, especially the Beyond the Grid Solar Rangers, where it was a hybrid of the Solar Rangers designs and their connection to their original powers. Freaking cool, man. I love the comic designs. I don't know what's wrong with people, but I love the idea of the Solar Rangers and Praetor, the evil Morphin Master, and the fact that they explained where the Zeo powers come from and they cut it off from the universe. Beyond the Grid was filled with really awesome lore ideas. It just kind of didn't come together as a story for me, but I still love that it exists because it has some really cool lore. I still kind of wish that when the Beyond the Grid team reconnected to the universe, it was after it was repaired, and like versions of them were in the repaired universe, and the Solar Rangers would have been time remnants, because that would have been a cool story to have this team of Solar Rangers traveling around trying to find purpose since they're now these weird duplicates. I don't know why I brought my fanfiction into this, but I just couldn't help but think about that. But also, speaking of stuff that was mixed that I still enjoyed, Power Rangers Universe. I think that was very mixed. It did contradict something that was already established about the origin of the Emissaries, which again, very common comic practice. That will happen often. There'll be accidental retcons or purposeful retcons. But if you set that aside, you know, and the story was a little bit mixed, I actually love the hell out of that origin for the Emissaries. Like, again, it did contradict something, but it was only one panel, but I loved that origin for the Emissaries and, like, tying it to the Squadron Rangers and how they were kind of like the first Rangers, sort of, but they first transformed into Rangers that didn't exist yet but they did from the Morphin Grid's perspective because the Morphin Grid's happening all at once. I love timey-wimey stuff like that. And I also dig what they did with the Phantom Rangers origin. It wasn't perfect, but it kind of retained an air of mystery while explaining it. Um, also, as far as some side stories go, they're not all perfect, but I do love that we have gotten some graphic novels and stuff focusing on other seasons and stuff like that. Soul of Dragon was pretty cool. It connected to some main show lore and Hyperforce. Cool concepts there. I think Sins of the Future is very underrated. Like, not only do we get a cool new Black Time Force Ranger and some Hyperforce connections, but it was a really good story that I felt was a really great spiritual successor to Time Force because it kind of had this core theme about living in the moment and not worrying about the past and the future, which I think was a great, like, spiritual sequel story to Time Force's deeper meaning about making your own future. I think it really felt like a great sequel to the deeper aspects of Time Force. I recommend giving that a reread. That's one of my favorite comic storylines. I also really personally enjoy the Unlimited series. I think it's a really cool way of giving deeper backstory to characters like Andros and Caron, the Phantom Ranger, and Rita, while also tying it to the main comic. And what's great about those, in my opinion, is that you can read them standalone and enjoy like, hey, now I know more about Rita or Andros. You don't have to read the main comic. It does enhance and connect to whatever's going on in the main comic, but it's not required. So if you're not like up for the task of, you know, catching up on all the comics and you just want to enjoy this standalone astronomer story, go for it. You can totally enjoy it. And I think that's a really cool series. I wanted to really quickly highlight that I think Draken New Dawn was really underrated. That was a really cool series that explored some interesting stuff with the coinless world and ended, a, ended us off on a cliffhanger that I still want to see explored. And just to wrap up with some of the more recent stuff that I liked, I thought the MMPR Rangers' journey to find a new command center, planet hopping, was pretty fun, doing some Ninja Steel lore connections. I loved Rocky getting highlighted in that. I think that the Stone Canyon trio has kind of gotten shoved to the side a bit. So it was cool to not only see Rocky highlighted, but giving him a cool moment, like his own version of the MMPR, like classic Red Ranger armored power-up with the new Green Ranger shield. I thought that was really cool. Kim's forever pink storyline fighting in this holodeck grid thing uh, actually gave a really cool reason for the fan service villains coming in but also getting her own like like force ghost morphin grid future thing for 
Forever Pink, which I thought was just really cool. I really did like that. I really liked Death Ranger. I thought they were a really interesting character. I hope that they come back. Um, it was a little bit anticlimactic, but I love the idea of their character, and there was some really interesting stuff. I love that they were able to bring Andros in, set up more about the mythology of the In Space Rangers. There's just been all kinds of really cool stuff going on. Even if it's not always perfect, I really have been enjoying the stuff they're doing, and I like that they're keeping the Omegas active as well. I could probably go on and on and list a lot more things, but I feel like I mostly went over all the different aspects and broader strokes of what I really like. And I just really do love the comics. I think that they're really um, this amazing expansion on the lore, and I love all of the, the lore expansion. I love all the lore explainers of things that have been long out there, lore expansion, more in-depth characters, new rangers, and I hope to see that continue. And I definitely hope to see it break more away from the original continuity in the sense that, again, it originally existed in an alternate enhanced version of the continuity, but now that we've had our new 52 Shattered Grid, you can do stuff that never happened, because that is one thing that bothers me, is that they feel like they always want to line back up to a rough version of where we were in the show universe, and I hope that they break out past that, but yeah. I really do love the comics. Again, one of my personal favorite things about the franchise, and if you haven't gotten into them yet, I definitely highly recommend you check them out, you know. People are always having a hard time finding a place to start because it's gotten a little confusing. You know, you can read some of these one-offs like the graphic novels or the Unlimited for standalone stories, um, but also just start from Mighty Morphin Issue Zero, the original comic Issue Zero, Issue One. Um, that's a good place to start to see if you'll like it. Just read through the Draken arc, you know, and go from there. But anyways, guys, that's about it for this one. I want to hear what you guys love about the comic, the comics in the comments. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell. See you in occasion for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.